to the UIAAA Connection podcast. GoFan and VNN are proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection. Now a combined company, GoFan and VNN provide a seamless integration for digital ticketing and athletic websites. Direct your fans to one place for all your athletic events, communications, and tickets to home and away games. Thank you to GoFan and VNN for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. I'm your host, Mark Hutch Hunter. Today we have as our special guest, Genesee Robison, the Director of Athletics at Kearns High School. Welcome to the podcast, Genesee. Thank you. Let's have you begin by sharing with our audience where you grew up, where you went to school, where you went to university, your first job, that type of thing. Um, so I grew up in Utah County. I lived in Cedar Hills. I went to Lone Peak High School. Um, after I graduated, I spent a year at Snow College where I met my husband and then transferred down to Southern Utah University where I got my degree in physical education and health education. And then apply for jobs, ended up getting hired up at Kearns Junior High as a PE teacher and a basketball coach. So did you play basketball at Lone Peak? I did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I never played That's... any organized organized basketball. It kind of was like, hey, we're hiring you. This job comes with it. And I was like, okay, let's go. It reminds me of uh, when I first got my first job at Jordan. Of course, it was years ago, like 1979. They said, okay, yeah, you teach math. You coach, oh, by the way, you're doing track. And I said, well, okay, I, I guess that's what we'll do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> talk for a minute about your, uh, in Cedar Hill. So how close are you to the golf course, number one? Um, I am a, lived about two blocks away from the golf course. Okay, so are you a golfer? Um, I didn't pick up golf until I got married. And then I don't golf a ton, but I do golf some. Not well, but I golf. Okay. Uh, talk about your, uh, were you able to, to participate in any uh, youth sports growing up in Utah? I mean, there's a ton of leagues down in Utah County. Yeah. So when I was growing up, it wasn't, there weren't many clubs for, because I played soccer. And so there weren't mm -hmm. many clubs at that point. So it was a lot of competition as a, in youth and city. Um, transitioned over to the high school and played two years for the high school and then actually did not make it my junior year. And so at that point, I no longer played. Oh, okay. So that had to be tough for you a little bit after putting all that time into it. Oh, yeah. It was tough. It was such a large school. It was hard, you know, to get that notice and get the different things. And so, honestly, that was one of the best things that happened to me because <laughs> it led me to where I am now. All right. Perfect. Well, Lone Peak is so successful in academics and uh, athletics that's uh yeah that can that can be uh that can be tough let's have you talk for a minute to our audience about uh, some of the mentors and leaders you had in your life that have made a difference to you so in high school after i didn't make um, the soccer team one of my first mentors was coach stout um he was a lacrosse boys lacrosse coach at lone peak um he actually i needed to find something to do with not playing high school sports anymore. And so I became the manager for our boys lacrosse team. And at the time it was club. So he's the first one who really kind of led me and introduced me into that atmosphere of coaching and being part of a team without being a part as a player. So he's one of the first ones um, who really kind of introduced me to that. Um, another mentor I had was down at SUU, who's actually the athletic trainer. So at the time, I was considering going to athletic training and kind of wavered back and forth. It didn't quite work out with my husband's schedule and what he wanted to do. And so my next step was like, okay, I want to coach. I want to be involved with high school sports. And so teaching kind of fit that next thing. But um, his name was Ben Davis. So he was the mm -hmm. athletic trainer down at SUU who kind of mentored me and you know, pushed me and was like, you should be an athletic trainer, but you know, you're a great coach. And then once I moved up here, honestly, one of my really good mentors is Emily Williams at Kearns High School. She used to be one of the athletic mm -hmm. directors, right. amazing track coach, amazing athlete, like 
she's absolutely fantastic. So she's someone I've been able to go to and say, okay, how do I handle this? What do I do here? And she's just been a really good mentor and support for me. That's excellent. Let me ask you a question. I know you're at Kearns. I'm interested to know if what the high school's relationship with the Olympic Oval, which is basically right across the street, are you able to do maybe some things that other high schools can't do because maybe get some ice time during the day when it's not as busy? I, I, I'm just wondering if that's true. So we do have a relationship with the Olympic Oval. Our lifetime activities PE class actually spends most of the semester over at the Olympic Oval learning how to ice skate, learning ice hockey, various different things, curling. And so it's a cool experience for our students to be able to get that, that a lot of other kids are not getting. Oh, so I'm fascinated about a curling and B ice hockey, because those would be two things that I don't think you would ever see in a high school curriculum. No, not at all. There's something that something most of them kids never get would ever get to do without the access to the Olympic Oval across the street. That's fascinating. Well, let me ask you a little bit of a personal question here. Genesee, what's your biggest failure or disappointment in life and what did you learn from it? There's a lot of like small failures for certain daily. Probably my biggest disappointment was when I didn't make the high school team because that was such a big deal as a teenager and it, my whole life revolved around it and that's sure. what I wanted to do. Um, but it changed the trajectory of my life. At the time, I wanted to be um, an engineer. And with the loss of that, trying to find something to do, I was led to, you know, being a manager for my high school lacrosse team, getting involved with sports that way. And at that point, that's when I discovered I really love being on a sideline. I really love being with athletes, working with athletes, particularly working with teenagers. As I um, graduated high school, I was always hanging out with my little sister and her teenage friends and my little brother and his, you know, teenage friends, because that's just the atmosphere. I love hanging out and being associated with teenagers. And it was at that point that I was decided engineering wasn't for me. And I actually wanted to go into something more athletic driven. And that's what led me to becoming a PE teacher and then a coach. That's fascinating. So explain to our audience and to me how it is. So you, you went the PE route. You obviously you're a graduate of SUU, the coaching factory, which I've had many guests uh, from on the show that are from SUU. And all of a sudden you get this chance to become an AD. So how does that happen? So interestingly enough, I've had a lot of different opportunities at Kearns High. I don't even, I don't teach PE for the most part anymore. I actually now teach math. So um, admin just gives us a lot of opportunities to develop, try different things, you know, go different routes because as things come open and um, I'm one of our more senior coaches and very organized, very driven, can be kind of intense. And admin came to me and said, hey, RAD is actually Emily Williams at the time, and she switched over to student government. And so would you be interested in being athletic director? And I jumped at that because I just want to be involved with our athletes and make Kearns a better experience and a great experience for our athletes. And how long ago was that? Um, that was last year. That was my first year. Okay. So you, you got to miss the, uh, the baptism by COVID, so to speak. That yes. Would have been a mess, I guess, for a first year person. So let me ask you just in the one year, the year and a half that you've been doing this, has the job changed? Is it mostly the same? Is it what you thought it would be? Is it more than you thought? Give me your thoughts regarding. I think it's that. more than I thought it would be. There's just so many different rules you have to know, so many different sports, communicating with the different coaches, trying to make sure, you know, they have everything completed, everything they do. And then it's also that component of, I want the best experience for my students and my athletes that I find more things to do and say, hey, well, what if we do this? Wouldn't this be a cool experience? Wouldn't you? So it becomes a more than I thought it would be just because I involve myself with so many things and wanting to try different things with our athletes. Speak to our audience about being a successful woman AD. Let me say this properly, because even though in Utah, we have more and more women in that role, it's still 
a, a male dominated profession, so to speak. So uh, talk about uh, talk about your experience. It's an interesting experience. The key to the whole experience is honestly my husband. Um, I have four kids under the age of 10. And so as a mother, a lot of that responsibility typically would, you know, fall on me, but my husband steps it up and does everything that I need him to do so I can be involved in the way I'm involved. And without that, I don't think I'd be able to dedicate the amount of time that I'd be able to. Um, there's also that component of there's a cool experience where the women ADs come together and support each other and help each other out and meet together and give each other advice and mentor each other. And so that's a cool experience along with it, but it definitely is having to balance that time and making sure I have the right support to make sure that my family and everything is still taken care of. Excellent. Talk about how you became involved in the UIAAA as a, as a new AD, was it Emily? Was it other people in your region? How did you hear about it? Um, I actually, as soon as I became an AD, was looking at things and found that it was available. I knew that Pam Olson, who is mm -hmm. in our region at Hunter, is right. heavily involved with UIAAA and ADEC and various things. And so I kind of looked deeper into it and I wanted it to receive that training that comes with it rather than be like, oh yeah, I'm an AD, here we go. And I just felt like that mentoring and those classes could give me more depth to make sure I was prepared to do my job. Excellent. So let me have you talk for a minute. I know uh, I've spoken obviously with uh, <clears throat> Missy Widers, Jan uh, down at the office and um, Sharon and Andy. And I know for the past, I think, three years at the conference, we've had just that special women's section. It gets bigger every year. And and uh, talk about the benefits of that and <clears throat> how that has helped grow the women in our state in ADs and how it's helped the association. So I immediately saw that session. I was like, OK, I got to be there. Got to be a part of this. And it was a really cool experience just to come together with all these women. We sat in a circle and talked about various things. And just to know that there were other women who understood the experience of being a woman AD and the various challenges we face, you know, with our home life or with coaches and various things kind of as a woman, was it's really just a cool, like, atmosphere and with that, I immediately was able to go to one and say, hey, I would love a mentor, someone I know I have their, you know, phone number, someone I know I can reach out to that can relate to me and help me, you know, guide me through the different challenges I may face. And so it was a really cool experience with that. That's excellent. Let me ask you, and I should have followed up with this question earlier. Let me ask about your four kids. Boys, girls, twins, not twins, ages. So I, I have mean, a 10 year old boy. He's my oldest. And then I have a seven year old girl. And then I have four year old identical twin boys. That is awesome. And the reason I say that is because uh, <clears throat> I have twins. I have fraternal twins. Uh, my daughter, who is a twin, has twins. I have a brother who has twins and I have two sisters who have twins. So when I asked you that, I actually had no idea that you actually had twins, but that's. Uh, yeah, it's a handful. <laughs> and let me ask is so as your 11 or excuse me, is your 10 year old boy turned into a teenager yet? Or is he? Oh, he's getting there. Mom <laughs> knows absolutely nothing. He's getting there. He's like that preteen. I'm like, oh, good heavens. Yeah, he's getting there. And uh, is uh, uh, is he involved in sports? Your seven year old involved in sports at all? Yes, he actually golfs. He wasn't, you know, yeah. didn't find the team sports as much as an interest, but he enjoys golf. And so, how do you you talked about your husband helping you out? So, how do you find being a busy AD, and then you've got your husband helping you out, but then you've got a uh, a young boy that golfs and you've got everything going on at Kearns. I mean, how, uh, 
how do you fit that all together? That's incredible. So it helps. My husband's a nurse. And so especially during um, the different seasons, he schedules his schedule around my schedule so that he then can be home for our kids. So if I have to be at a basketball game, that's a night or day he doesn't work so that he's home with the kids running them around. Um, there's times where I'm at the school and I'm like, okay, just a second. I've got to go, you know, grab my daughter and then I'll be back in various things. So it's finding that balance and definitely a calendar of, okay, who's getting who, who's getting this person where. And so it's really nice to have that flexibility in his schedule to adapt around me. That is great. Share with our audience I assume that last year then was your first UI AAA conference, or have you been to two? No, that was my first one. Okay, so I want you to talk to those that out there that maybe haven't been or those that have been. Give your impression and what it was like going to your first conference. Was it all that you expected? Was it just too much, too little? I mean, talk about that, because I'm always interested as as one who was in charge then, who is no longer in charge at uh, getting the new people involved. So go ahead and take that over. So it was really cool to attend the classes in person because you would have those conversations rather than online where, you know, you're just kind of sitting there, you're not a part of the conversation. So that was really nice to have that piece of it where I sat through a couple classes, was able to ask my questions, get clarification on some of the things because the legal classes can be a lot you're like oh my gosh you feel like you're doing everything wrong and you're like oh my what are we doing here and so it was just kind of a nice comfort like okay you're okay this is how we handle this and then it was really cool to just meet the different ad's and connect with them and the different experiences that everyone has at various different schools with different demographic of students and have those conversations with them um I loved having the different vendors in and being able to you know talk to someone one-on-one -on -one and say hey how does this work you know, you claim this, how does that, you know, how can you make that claim? And just then be able to go back to my coaches and say, Hey, I know how this works. I've had a conversation with them. This is definitely something you should be interested in looking into. And then just the networking and talking to the school, you know, state school board, hearing their component of the whole thing. And then Utah High School Activity Association and their whole component of the different thing. And it was just a really cool experience. And I, something I want to make sure I repeat every year. Excellent. What's one common myth about being an athletic director that you'd like to bunk to the general public? I think it's that we make the rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're even from coaches. It's a lot of like, well, why are you making us do this? And it's, well, I'm not making you do this. This is the state rules. I'm just making sure we protect ourselves and keep within those rules so that, we don't run into something down the road where it's like, oh, crap, we did not do what we were supposed to do here. So we're just there to support our coaches and, you know, help enforce the rules to make sure our programs are successful and don't run into issues. Excellent. What's the favorite part of your job, Jensi? The athletes. I love interacting with the different athletes from various sports. When you're coaching, you know, you get that interaction, but you only get that interaction with the sport you're coaching. So as AD, you know, I'm interacting with our football team, our cheer squad, our drill team, our wrestlers, various, you know, athletes with different backgrounds and different experiences with athletics. And I just love that interaction with these teenagers and these athletes. Very well said. Thanks for sharing that. Let me ask you, uh, as we finish up here, and I realize that you're a new AD yourself, but if you had two pieces of advice for a brand new athletic director, you being one yourself, and they had to follow Genesee's advice in order to become a success, what would your two pieces of advice be? Um, one would definitely find somebody who they can go to with their questions, a mentor, someone as they are navigating through all of it, because it's a lot of front um, just somebody who they know knows the ropes definitely is helpful to have someone to go with your questions to get answers. And so that's the number one thing I would um, tell them. Then the number two thing was just have fun, enjoy it, try different things for your athletes, see what happens. If it doesn't work, you move on to the next thing and, you know, kind of think outside of that box of things that other people may not be doing, but may work well with your demographic with af of athletes. 
Very good. We'll finish with this then. Genesee, what questions should I have asked you that I failed to ask you? I don't think there's any. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can think of anyway. I don't know. Maybe, you know, how my season went. I'm actually a girl soccer coach. And All right. Well, then let's let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about your current season. We won region for the we're back to back region champions. This is our fourth region in 20 years. So it's a really exciting thing for our program to see it growing. That's a big deal back to back. So that has to have obviously for the kids, that's a big deal. But <clears throat> talk about the effect that it has on those kids outside of soccer in school and, and the school pride and that type of thing. So definitely sports at Kearns, you know, has had its ups, its downs, its all around. Um, when I took over the program, they hadn't won a region championship in 17 years. Um, it was back in, you know, 2001 with Emily Williams, our amazing athlete at Kearns who had won region. And so it was Difficult because a lot of people kind of looked at it and said, yeah, our sports suck. There's, you know, they're not any good. And then as we grew and have won a couple of region champions, it becomes this, hey, look, they're winning region champions. We can, you know, win region championships, um, finding that success, having these athletes have that effect in the classroom as they find success on the field and helping them find success in the classroom and the influence they have on their friends outside of the sport and, helping them find that drive to be successful themselves. Excellent. On that note, that wraps it up for this edition of the UIAAA Connection. Again, our special guest today has been Genesee Robinson, the Director of Athletics at Kearns High School. Genesee, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank you. For our listeners, we hope you tune in again next week for another edition of the UIAAA Connection. 